Hey guys, welcome to Oats Championship Wrestling OCW. We are just a few days away from our first pay-per-view here on YouTube.com. It's going to be one hell of a summer night. You guys do not want to miss it. We're going to find out who the number one contender is tonight for the OCW World Heavyweight Championship as Brant takes on the Mask Canuck and Captain Oats in a triple threat match inside a Hell in a Cell. Mrs. Oates is also going up against Nikki in their rematch for the OCW Women's Championship here tonight in a Hell in a Cell. And we also got the number one contender match for the um, World Tag Team Championship that will also take place at the pay-per-view this, uh, this upcoming weekend. And we also have a Money in the Bank match tonight for the Intercontinental Championship. So they can cash it in at any time. Uh, our first match of the, uh, the, uh, the night, though, is Yak Babbler versus Mimo Plays. As you guys know, both those men have yet to win a match here on OCW. So who is going to win it tonight? Is it going to be Yak Babbler or is it going to be Mimo Plays? I want you guys to put it down in the comments down below. As you guys know, they have yet to win a match here, both of them. So it's time to bring that streak to an end. So it's a winner <laughs> ends the streak match. Uh, losing streak that is so Mimo plays already getting him uh, Yak in an armbar here But you guys know from the last two matches that Yak has always been the most Dominant when it comes to these two Mimo's been struggling a little bit in the ring as uh, as he made his debut But we're gonna see how it goes tonight So here you go Yak Babbler's got him up top. What's he thinking? Looks like a military press and it is And I was picking him up and he's going for the sidewalk slam, and he hits it back to the mat. And, uh, yeah, Yak Babbler is definitely very athletic. Oh, hits him with the electric chair. Mimo uh, smartly rolling to the outside there. But Yak deciding, nope, and it looks like he's going to try and suplex him in. And Mimo has got that charisma, and he does have the speed. He just needs to find that ring agility and ability. In order to start winning matches. Yak Babbler going for an early pin. One. Only a one count as Mimo kicks out. Oh. Yak hits him with the big right hook. And hits him with a leg drop. Is that going to be enough? And now he picks up Mimo plays. Hits him with the big right hook. And another one. And another one. Down to the mat he goes. Taking the time to taunt once more. Mimo now. Climbing to the top using the ropes there. Yak Babbler wasting no time. Phase Buster from the top. Is it enough? He rolls to the outside now. What's he thinking? Decides to go back in and hits him with the neck breaker. Is that enough? Mimo having a lot of a hard time here just to get back to his feet and even stay on his feet. Big knee to the face. Yak Babbler picking him up now. What's he thinking here? Oh no, pile driver. And he hits it. Is that it? Is, is Mimo counting stars? One, two, three is the three count. Yak Babbler is the winner and has ended his losing streak welcome to your first win yak babbler very well played as you we thought he had it here that was kind of early on when he tried to go to that pin but it was ultimately that powell driver that was able to etch the one two three and get yak babbler his first win here on ocw congratulations to you yak babbler well deserved and don't worry Mimo you're going to have a lot of other opportunities here on OCW and I guarantee you that you'll win one eventually but until then you are back uh, you are continuously back on that losing streak well played alright well next up is a mixed tag team match you got Zenmic and CL taking on the team of Natalia and Lyndon SG now, Natalia and Lyndon uh, have quite the chemistry. They've been friends for a very long time as to where uh, Zen and CL are actually the power couple. So, couples versus friend, 
who is going to be the winner? All right, Natalia starting strong with a backbreaker. Picking her up now. She's got CL up, and they're going up high, and she's going to get her with the very powerful modified suplex. She's picking her up now. Oh, right hook, but CL able to reverse, throwing her against the rope. It's buying her some time here. She's got her knee to the back of Natalia's head as she's driving her throw right into that middle rope there. Going for the three count. Not even a one count. Natalia able to kick out right away. She's got her in the head scissors. Couple shots to the head. Decides to let go. So the way the rules are in a mixed, mag, uh, mixed match tag team match. Big kick to the back of the head. And then with the knee strike. If CL or Natalia were to tag in their male counterparts. The other, they would actually have to exit, and then the males would battle it inside the ring. And then vice versa, if a male tags in his female partner, then the females need to enter the ring. CL now with the snapmare and big knee to the face. Picks up Natalia. What is she thinking here? Oh... Choke slam backbreaker. Natalia is crawling her way to the corner. CL, though, not wasting any time with those boots to the face. Is dragging Natalia to the middle of the ring. Going for a pin. Is that enough? One, two, only a two count. CL can't believe it. Natalia already back to her feet, though. Threatening her with a punch. But Natalia. <laughs> And CL wastes no time and hits her with that Russian leg sweep. She's picking her up now. Throwing her right in the corner. Oh, and now she's tagging in Zenmik. Zenmik going right after Linden, wasting no time. Power couple. Oh, no. They get those super kicks, and they were in sync there. Natalia rolling to the outside. Zenmik now. Oh, he gets him with the face buster. Linden in trouble. Is it enough though? Looks like he's going for the pin. One, two, two count. Linden getting right back to his feet. Zenmik now hits Linden with that DDT. He's picking him up. What's he going to set up here? All right, he's holding him on. Bringing him right to the corner. Oh, with the shot to the face. Linden has been busted open. Big boot. Kick to the back. Linden does need to make a tag here. I think he's in trouble. Zenmig, though, deciding to tag in CL. That is quite the strategy since it's giving Linden that, that breather. She comes in hot with that drop kick and now gets Natalia back to her feet. Throws her in the corner up against the turnbuckle. Kick to the midsection. All right, what's she thinking here? Drive by kick and she nails it. Is that enough? Can she get the three count? She is dragging her to the middle of the ring. Going for the three count. One, two. Linden with the save just in time. CL now picking Natalia back up. Gets her with another modified choke slam backbreaker. Taking the time to taunt. Adding insult to injury. Natalia does not seem to be getting up, but never counter out. As she is one of the most ruthless women here on OCW. Getting back to her feet now. Turning around. Oh, but it's a bulldog. Never mind. A reverse Canadian driver by CL. And now she is setting her up. As Natalia slowly gets back to her feet here. Oh no, she's got her and... Wow. Canadian driver backbreaker. Is she going for the pin? 
She is. One, two. Natalia able to lift just enough to stop that three count. Armbar takedown though by CL. Natalia now trying to get back to her feet. Zenmig very angry with the rest decision there. Not to call it three count. CL sending Natalia in the corner there. What is she thinking? Oh no. Oh no. This is going to be a crazy one. Are they going for the superplex? They're not. She reverses almost into a power bomb. But Zenmig is able to get the save. CL taking the time to taunt. Not sure if that was a good idea as she meets Natalia's fatal clothesline. You don't want to run into one of those. Throwing her up against the turnbuckle now. Tagging in Linden. Deciding to take a breather. Here comes Linden. What are they thinking here? In unison. Oh. Kicks to the midsection. Drive-by roundhouse kick. Zemmick now getting picked up back to his feet as Linden does get him down with an armbar. And now he's got him in that submission. Will Zemmick tap out? Zemmick reversing now. Both men back to their feet. Oh, no! Zemmick heads him with a spear. Is that enough? One, two... Almost a three count, but he is able to kick out as Zenmig now is trying to choke Linden into the mat. Taking a second there to get up close and personal and give him a few words of his own. Trying to get him in that sleeper hold now. Is that going to be enough? Will Linden tap out here? Natalia coming in, trying to cause a distraction. Zenmig though going up to the top. What's he doing? This is going to be a very long drop. And he hits him with the elbow drop. Going for the pin. Is it enough? One. Two. Oh. Only a one count. As he decides to break it up. Again, not sure why he's doing that. Modified flapjack. And now he's picking Linden right back up to his feet. He's got him up high. Gets him with the flapjack. Linden, though, jumping right back to his feet. Reverses with a clothesline. And what's it going to be? Oh, super kick. Is it enough? Is it enough? Linden is slowing down here. I think he's running out of gas in the tank. Picking up Zenmik up to his feet. Linden is our current... OCW Tag Team Champion with Mass Canuck, who tonight might earn a spot to fight Stewart. Oh, code breaker by Linden. Is it enough? One, two, only a two count. Yes, uh, so Mass Canuck might win uh, this evening to fight this weekend against SSC Stewart in the main event for the OCW World Heavyweight Championship. Linden, though. Deciding to fire himself up. Picking Zenmig back up. Drop kick to the back and he hits it. He's got him up. Oh no, is he going to do it? Back crusher. Is it enough? Is he going to get him here? Taking a second to think about it. Get Zenmig back to his feet here. Modified backbreaker. Dragging him to the middle here. One, two, three. CL getting in there a little too late, allowing Linden to pick up the victory for him and Natalia. That was quite the matchup, guys. A lot of back and forth. This was CL trying to get an early pin attempt. But Natalia was able to kick out. And this was the face buster by Zenmik. He tried to get the pin there, but Linden was able to kick out after a two count. 
And this was the drive-by leg kick to Natalia. Definitely did a lot of damage, but ultimately it was still Lyndon and Natalia that picked up the win. Now, I mean, they're tr they're starting to heat up in in the um, into the upcoming weekend because both of them are going to have some crazy matches. Uh, Natalia still has a rematch clause that will be uh, that will be cashed this weekend as Mrs. Oates, Nikki, and Natalia are going to fight it out for the OCW World Women's Championship. And uh, that will end the, the rivalry between those three that are actually teammates. So next up is a fatal four-way ladder match for the Money in the Bank for the Intercontinental Championship. You got Avenger UK, Combat Great, Patches McFluffy, and Rod the Leg going at it. Uh, Avenger and Patches, as of late, have actually had a bit of a rivalry. On the other hand, Rod the Leg and Combat Grape are actually teammates. So it's going to be interesting to see if they keep that tag team alive tonight. Or is it every man for themselves in this ladder match? Rod the Leg hitting Patches already with a super kick to the outside. Now he's picking him up. Gets him with a Hurricane Rana. And in the meantime, Avenger hits Combat Grape with a power bomb as combat rolls to the outside patches throwing rod the leg into those steel steps combat now with the snap mare to avenger and decides to hit him right in the head with that big right hook patches now with the back breaker to rod the leg as avenger throws uh, combat right into the turnbuckle and hits him with that backbreaker. Super kick by Patches. So much action already in this Fatal 4-Way Ladder match. Who is going to be the first to go for the Money in the Bank briefcase? Patches now throwing Rod the Leg to the outside while Avenger and Combat continue to fight in the middle of the ring. Avengers going for that double underhook suplex and he nails it as combat rolls out of the way. Patches now has a ladder and smacks Rod the leg with it. It looks like he's about to give him a bit of a beating and he does. So it looks like our ladder oh, might be coming into play as it doesn't. Patches decides to go in and help Avenger. Interesting strategy here. As I said, Avenger and Patches have a bit of a rivalry going on. But maybe they realize that they need to take out this tag team first before they focus on that briefcase. Avenger now with the suplex to rod the leg as Patches throws Combat Grape over and rod the leg also rolling to the outside here. Looks like Avenger UK is picking up that ladder. He is putting it inside the ring. Is he going to be the first to go for the briefcase here? He's thinking about it as combat throws patches against the steel step. Avenger setting up that ladder. And here he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Will he get that briefcase? Is this his moment? Is he going to get the briefcase and become the Mr. Money in the Bank for the Intercontinental Championship? That grants him a contract to face the whoever the current champion is at any given time whether it be during a match after a match before a match anytime anywhere combat grape in trouble here big power bomb from the top of the ladder by patches he's going for rod the leg who's been also knocked out right on the ladder decides to climb over smart strategy there by by patches trying to get that briefcase Will this be enough? Is it Patch's turn to get the briefcase? He's starting to unhook it there as Avenger is getting back to his feet. Is he going to be able to get back inside the ring and stop Patch's McFluffy from getting that briefcase? Avenger deciding to push the ladder. And he does as Rod the Leg now finally dropping and he catches Patches McFluffy with that electric chair there. 
Combat Grape, though. Oh, no. DDT is his partner. So I guess it really is every man for himself. But Rod the Leg says no way. Jumps right back up to his feet. Hits Patches with that modified Falcon Arrow. Right before, though, he had just thrown Combat right over the top rope. Avenger now throwing Rod the Leg into the corner. Oh no, I think he's trying to go for that suplex against the ropes and he hits it. Hits the suplex right against the ropes there. Combat Grape now setting up that ladder. But nope, he's taking the time as Rod rolls out. Combat gets Avenger up against the ropes. Oh no, sending his head right off that top rope. Picking him up again. Oh, big spine buster, but that does knock the ladder down. The ladder has fallen as Patches McFluffy now gets back inside the ring. He's picking up Avenger while Combat Grape, though, running for that briefcase. He's got his hands on it. Patches, though, trying to go for the save. Smacks Combat in the back. Now decides to push down the ladder and he gets it. Combat though still holding on to that briefcase as Avenger hits Patches with a suplex. Rod the Leg coming right back in. Combat finally falls. Not able to unhook or hold on. Combat rolling to the outside to give himself a chance to get a breather. While Phase Buster busts Open Avenger by Rod the Leg. Patch is back to his feet now. Avenger throwing Rod the Leg to the outside. Smacks Patches with a right hook. He's got the ladder in hand now. Smacks him back down with the ladder. Smart strategy. As now he looks like he might be thinking about getting that briefcase. And there you go. Avenger trying to unhook that briefcase. Can he get it? Patch is climbing up now. Rod the Leg coming in. Is he? Oh, he was trying to pull off Patches, but Patches was able to get him with the boot. Rod the Leg is knocked out at the bottom of the ladder as Avenger again trying to unhook the briefcase. Here comes Combat Grape. He's pushing that ladder over, or he's trying to, and he gets it. Avenger holding on. Oh no, Combat gets him with the electric chair a little bit of his medicine as Avenger rolls to the outside Rod the leg picking up the ladder setting it up now which of these men is going to become our Mr. Money in the Bank for the Intercontinental Championship and when do you guys think they're going to catch it cash it in sorry put it in the comments down below Rod the leg what is he thinking here patches outside Oh, going for the suicide dive, and he hits it. Combat Grape is the only man in the ring as he's trying to get back to his feet. On the outside, though, Rod the Leg is picking up patches. He's coming into the ring now, realizing that Combat was back to his feet. Combat just tossing him against the ropes here. Trying to go for a spear, but he misses. And Rod the Leg capitalizes with that DDT. Patches picking up the ladder, smacking Rod the Leg, who decides to roll to the outside. Meanwhile, Avenger is back into the ring, and he decides to pick up Combat Grape. Big right elbow. Patches, for some reason, breaks it up. He's got Combat. Oh, and he slams him down to the mat. Avenger now was going for the suplex, but Patches says no and just throws him, throws combat right over the top rope. Oh, and now he sends Avenger flying right into that ladder. It looks like Patches, though, he's debating setting up the ladder, decides to go to the outside. No, he comes right back in. And just doing a bit of a dance there over the ladder. <laughs> Trying to decide what his next move is as Combat Grape is back to his feet. 
Oh, he's getting to, he's trying to catch him. Combat can't seem to get a hold of Patches. Combat thrown over the top rope by Rod the League. Avenger throwing Rod, uh, Patches right over the top rope. And it looks like Avenger is going to go for that briefcase. Is Avenger going to become our Money in the Bank winner? Rod the Leg, though, coming in. Can he get the save? He's got one hit in the back, but Avenger's still holding on. Combat with the hit. Rod the Leg now climbing. Boatman fighting it at the top. Combat and Patches trying to get both men down. Oh, Avenger's been knocked down. He decides to roll over out of the ring. Combat Grape gets hit with the Falcon Arrow while Rod the Leg is still holding on to that briefcase. Rod just fell right onto the ladder and decides to roll out as Patches gets Combat in a crippling crossface in the middle of the ring. Oh, lights just went out. We better pay our hydro bill as Patches decides to climb. I hope we get our power back in time. Here we go. Patches is at the top trying to, uh, looks like the lights are back as well, trying to unhook that briefcase. Will he do it? Combat, though, back to his feet. Combat trying to push that ladder. Giving all his strength, whatever he's got left in the tank, he is not able to do it. Avenger now back inside the ring. Combat and oh! Combat fell right off as Patches is unhooked the, he, on the briefcase. Patches McFluffy has done it, ladies and gentlemen. He has become our Mr. Money in the Bank. So he can cash that at any time for a chance to face whoever the current Intercontinental Champion will be at the time. This match had tons of action. It never stopped. Um, I was never sure who, who was going to win. Avenger got busted open. Rod the Lake and Combat Grape weren't able to keep that chemistry. Uh, it really turned into every man for themselves. But it, ultimately, it was Patches McFluffy who was able to unhook the Intercontinental Championship money in the bank. Congratulations to you, Patches. You've been quite on the hot streak lately. Well, next up is the number one contender for the Tag Team Championship. We got the corp, well, ex-corporate heels, because that no really longer exists. And they're no longer part of the corporation. You got Atham and Golden Steph going up against Sebi G and Kirby the Tank, the Twin Connection. Now, the Twin Connection work really well together when it comes to tag team matches. So we're going to see how they do tonight in this Extreme Rules match. Again, the winner will face off against the Mask Canuck and Linden SG this upcoming weekend for the World Heavyweight Tag Team OCW Championships. Sebi G getting Atham with a backbreaker. Meanwhile, Golden Steph picking up Kirby. What kind of witchcraft is this? <laughs> I am not sure, but Kirby reverses with a chop block. Meanwhile, though, Atham gets Sebi G with a backbreaker. Kirby the tank, though, taking a chop from Golden Steph and some right fists. What's Golden Steph thinking here? Sebi G, though, hitting Atham with the Canadian driver. Kirby the tank with the big headbutt. Twin connection taking control early. One, only a one count on Atham by Sebi G. Big right hook there by Kirby the Tank. Backdrop by Atham to Sebi G, who's now rolling out. It is a two on one situation here for Golden Steph and Atham. Kirby the Tank picking up Golden Steph, and he hits him with the suplex as he gets back to his feet. Golden Steph now rolls out. It is a one on one. Atham's got Kirby the Tank. Will he submit? He does not as Sebi G rolls in. Kirby the Tank able to uh, break out of that there with the reversal. Sebi G now picking up Atham. Belly to belly. He hits it as Golden Steph rolls right in. 
And now Kirby rolled out, but he's coming right back in. Going for Atham, but a save by Golden Steph as he's now trying to make Kirby tap out. Big right hook to Sebi G. Kirby the tank rolling out. Scoop slam. Golden Steph going for the one count. Oh, and now Atham trying to go for the second count, trying to catch him early. But Sebi G able to kick out after a one count both times. Atham rolling to the outside here. It looks like he's going under the ring. Russian leg sweep. Atham's got a sledgehammer. What's he thinking here? Oh, no, right to the ribs of Kirby the Tank. That is definitely going to slow down the tank. Golden Steph taking the time to taunt in the middle of the ring as Sebi G gets back to his feet. Now it looks like Golden Steph. Oh, no. Sebi G eating the ropes to the throat there. Atham picking up Kirby. Big clothesline. He's picking him up again. And now it looks like, oh no, backbreaker by Golden Steph. Kirby going to the corner there, but Atham's going for the pin. Is it enough? One. Only a one count. Kirby's still able to kick out. Sebi G comes back in, finally to the rescue of his partner, who definitely needed it. Don't forget that Kirby did take the sledgehammer right to those ribs by Atham. Headbutt fighting off Atham. Going for the pin, but broken up by Golden Steph. Backbreaker to Sebi G by Golden Steph. Kirby now throwing Atham against the rope, and he gets him with that scoop slam. Two on one situation, but Golden Steph right away goes for that reversal back uh, belly to belly. Kirby rolling to the outside. Atham breaking up on his own partner. Not sure why he does that. Looks like he's going under the ring again as Golden Steph beats on Sebi G. It looks like he's got that kendo stick. Oh no, double hit, and he also gets hit by that kendo stick by Atham. Atham gets him right in the head. And now with the shots while he's down, is it going to be enough? One, two, three. For some reason, Kirby decided to leave the ring with Golden Steph. And that paid off as those kendo shots were enough to keep Sebi G down for the three count. Golden Steph and Atham will face off against the Mass Canuck and Linden SG this upcoming Saturday at one hell of a summer night for the World Tag Team OCW Heavyweight Championships. There you go. That was it right here. They thought they had it. Then Atham went for the pin. Also thought he had it. But both times, Sebi G was able to kick out after a one count. But ultimately, that candlestick did enough damage to keep Sebi G down for the one, two, and the three. So guys, put in the comments down below. Are you enjoying OCW? Are you going to catch the pay-per-view this upcoming Saturday? Will we have new champions? Every title will be on the line. We also will have a new ring to show off at the pay-per-view for our first pay-per-view here on YouTube.com. Well played. Next up is the hardcore championship match between the fourth nobleman and Kid Chino. As you guys remember, after our main event last week, Kid Chino tried to attack the, no the fourth nobleman, but it was nobleman who turned it around by giving a butt whooping to Kid Chino. Can he do it again here tonight and retain his hardcore championship? Here we go. Wait, what's this? The action has already started between the two, and it looks like Drifting Turtle was just standing at the entrance, and he is attacking the fourth nobleman. Is he inserting himself into this match? And if he is, fourth nobleman, though, is not, he's not backing down because he is able to knock Drifting Turtle to his feet. Kid Chino, though, throwing the fourth nobleman right into the referee. Now he's throwing Drifting Turtle into that entrance ramp there. Drifting Turtle, though, gets him with the sidewalk slam right onto the entrance mat. 
Poor referee gets bulldozed by Nobleman again. Noble able to toss Drifting Turtle down the entrance ramp once again. Oh no, but <laughs> Drifting Turtle gets him with that DDT. And now Kid Chino gets Drifting Turtle with the reverse DDT. And now Drifting Turtle gets Kid Chino with a DDT. DDTs for days. Days and days and days. All right, it looks like Noble, though, getting back into the handle of this as he throws Drifting Turtle into the ring. Now, both men in the ring as Kid Chino's getting back to his feet on the outside. Oh, he was going for a DDT, but it's reversed by Drifting Turtle, who now gets Kid Chino with a back suplex who had just entered the ring. And now he's trying to give a choke slam to Noble, who's fighting it off, so he goes for the gut punch instead. Noble throws him over the top rope and now focuses on Kid Chino, gets him with the headbutt. Trying to go for the clothesline, Drifting Turtle misses. But there he goes. Oh, modified DDT backbreaker by Drifting Turtle to Nobleman. Drifting Turtle now throwing Kid Chino up against the turnbuckle. Turns his attention to Fourth Nobleman now. Fourth Nobleman gets him with the elbow. Oh, he's fighting back. Both men in the same turnbuckle now. Drifting Turtle using Nobleman and knocking down Kid Chino in the process. He's got him up now. What's he doing? Oh, he gets him with the slam up against the ropes, it looked like. Focusing on Nobleman now. Goes with the DDT. Is that enough? One, two, only a one count. Focusing on Kid Chino again. Going for that choke slam. But again, just goes for the gut punch as the Nobleman comes back in. Oh no, he's going for the rung and power slam. He's definitely won titles with this. One. Oh, Kid Chino able to break it up in time. So it definitely looks like Drifting Turtle is trying to get the hardcore championship here. But was that enough? It looks like he's exiting the ring. What's he thinking here? He's looking under the math. What is he going to pull out? He's got the kendo stick. Oh no, now he's just beating down on on the fourth nobleman. Giving a taste of nobleman's uh, medicine. Don't forget the last week. One, two, three. Oh no, Drifting Turtle is the new hardcore champion. I was just going to say though, last week Drifting Turtle and Nobleman were actually in a tag team match together. And Nobleman walked out on Turtz, costing them the match. And I'm wondering if that's what caused this reaction tonight. And, uh, yeah, it, there you go. We, he thought he had it there with the DDT, but ultimately it was the kendo stick that was able to keep Nobleman down for the three count. And now Drifting Turtle is our new hardcore champion. That championship is on the line 24-7. doesn't matter where you are, your grandma's house. Your community pool, baseball diamond, uh, movie theater, doesn't matter. Title is always on the line. Next up is the Intercontinental Championship table match. Morph 80 won a battle royale last week that basically granted him this opportunity tonight against SFC Stewart. As you guys know, Stewart is actually currently Mr. Two Belt as he also holds the OCW World Heavyweight Championship. He has yet to lose that championship. And he's yet he's only ever lost one tables match uh, in the many that he's had because that is his specialty. And he comes out the gate with that belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Morph 80, though, getting back to his feet. Gets him with the scoop slam. Now, uh, 
Morph 80 has been known to win quite a few matches pretty fast when he goes for that Pele kick. But again, Stewart does have that strength advantage here. Morph picking up. Oh, and he gets him with that driver. Stewart, though, rolling to his belly here. Morph 80 picking up Stewart again. And he gets him with that bridge suplex. Picking up Stewart once more. What's he thinking? Another bridge suplex. Will we get to see the table in play? Right hook by Morph 80, but a big boot response by Stewart. Just the advantage that he needed to get right back into this match. Now he's picking up Morph 80, and he goes for the Samoan drop, and he hits it. Stewart picking him up now. Falcon Arrow by Stewart as Morph 80 decides to roll to the other side of the ropes. Stewart, though, spears him right down to the arena floor, rolls right after him, picks him up, but spinning wheel kick by Morph 80, taking the time to taunt. Not sure if that is the right thing to do as Stewart's already getting back to his feet. Helped by Morph who gets him with a suplex right to the arena floor. That is going to hurt. He's picking him up again. And now he's just tossing him to the other side of the stadium. Picks him up. But Stewart able to, um, to reverse there and hits Morph against the turnbuckle. But he jumps to his feet quickly. Both men back inside the ring. Now, Morph 80 going to the outside. Is he going for the table? And he is. The table looks like it's coming into play. Morph 80 slides it in. Stewart taking the time to top, but Morph gives him no opportunity as he is bringing him right to the corner there. Slams him up against the turnbuckle, is sending him up high. What's he setting up here? Oh no, it looks like he's going for the superplex. Table's not set up though, but he nails it. That is going to give him a bit of time and take some breath out of Stewart as he picks up that table. He's setting it up here in the middle of the ring. Stewart though, back to his feet. Gets him with the fall away slam. Morph 80 back to his feet now. Stewart just taking the time to look at Morph. Is he setting it up? Oh, he's got him up. Samoan drop right next to the table. And now he's thinking about it. Kicking Morph while he's down. Picks him up. Oh, big Superman punch. Picks up Morph 80. He might try to capitalize here as he goes for the scoop slam. Misses the table by just an inch. Picks him up one more time. And now he looks like he's going to try and drag him over to the table. Morph 80, though, holding on. He throws him over the ropes. You can see Stewart there getting frustrated. Really thought he had it. Oh no, is he going to go with the superplex through the table? And he misses. Just an inch. He's off once more. Does not hit the mark as Morph 80 is getting picked up. It looks like Stewart now is trying to go for it once more. He doesn't get it. He reverses. Olympic Slam. Is that the opportunity that Morph 80 needed? Will he become our new intercontinental champion? Who knows? Uh, Patches McFluffy, I mean, could technically cash it in right now. His money in the bank for the intercontinental championship. That's how it works. He could literally even catch it after, uh, depending on who the winner is. That's how it works. 
Oh no, here it goes. Backbreaker. Oh, right on the table, but the table does not break, meaning there is no winner just yet. Morph 80 picks up the table, setting it up once more, it looks like. Stewart back to his feet. Now he's picking up. He's got Morph. Putting him up against the table. What's he thinking here? Oh, God! He hit him with the powerbomb! <laughs> That's it. Stewart retains his Intercontinental Championship. And I can't believe it because it was actually Morph 80 that just had just set up that table. But Stewart was able to capitalize with the powerbomb to retain his Intercontinental Championship. Good on him. Good job. That was one heck of a match. But ultimately, Stewart retains and is still Mr. Two Bell. However, that does mean that this weekend, Stewart is pulling double duty as he is going to have a mystery opponent for the Intercontinental Championship. Next up is the number one contender for the OCW World Heavyweight Championship match. Winner to face off against Stewart in the main event at one hell of a summer night this Saturday. We got Captain Oates, Brant, and the Mask Canuck. If you guys have been watching OCW, you know we've been having a tournament. And these final three have made it to the threat, triple threat match here tonight inside a Hell in a Cell match. After this is our main event. Who is your money on? Put it in the comments down below. I mean, the most dominant is 100% Brant, a.k.a. Good Scotch, a.k.a. Mr. Big Babyhead. But the Mask Canuck is wasting no time at going after him. And now Oates comes in, gets Mask Canuck with a snapmare. Brant now turning his attention to Captain Oates, but Captain Oates gets Brant. And... Bounces him right off the turnbuckle, turning his attention back to Maskinuk, who catches him with a suplex. And he gets back to his feet. Big clothesline to the Maskinuk by Brant as Captain Oates wisely rolls to the outside to catch a breather. Brant get, picking up Maskinuk. Gets him with the backbreaker. Going for the three count. One count. Kicks out. Saved by Captain O's, possibly, who is now just hitting Brant in the back of the head with that big right hook, who rolls out as well. Captain O's now with a neck breaker to the Mask Canuck in the middle of the ring. Picks him right back up. Brant now getting back to his feet, rolls inside the ring. Max Canuck with a snapmare to Captain O's, turning his attention to. Now, turning his attention to Brant and gets him with the toss. Now, going to Captain Oates and gets him with the neck breaker. Turning back his attention to Brant. One as Captain Oates rolls out. Only a one count. Mask Canuck now back to his feet. Big chop. Picks up Brant. Oh no, is he going for this follow it? He does. What power by the Mask Canuck who needs to turn around because Captain Oates. Has come back in. Hits him with the 1915. Is that enough? Brent is just on the on the ropes there. He goes for the pin. One. Two. Two count. Captain Oates can't believe it. Mask Canuck back to his feet. Gets Captain Oates with the DDT. Meanwhile, Brent's back in now. And he gets, and Mass Canuck though gets him with a sidewalk slam. Brant rolling again to the outside. Mass Canuck picks up Captain Oates. What's he thinking here? Another neck breaker. This could be his chance to capitalize and go to the main event at our pay per view this Saturday. Brant though rolls back in. As Mass Canuck's got that clutch right on the shoulder of Captain Oates. Big clothesline once again to the Mass Canuck. Mass Canuck, though, reverses Brant and throws him right into the turnbuckle there. 
turning him around. Oh no, he's picking him up. Mass Canuck turning his attention to Captain Oates. Gets him with a big right hook. Who rolls out, goes right back to Good Scotch. A.K.A. Mr. Brandt gets him with the backbreaker. All the way from the top rope. Is that enough? No, he decides to slam him into the mat. Now goes for the pin. One, two, only a two count. I can't believe that Brett was able to kick out after the one, two, after taking that really big backbreaker. Brett now hitting uh, Captain Oates with that sidewalk slam. And now he's going after the mass Canuck. And he gets him with the sidewalk slam. Going back to Captain Oates now. Oh, he gets him with that big right hook. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. He gets him with the headbutts to the you-know-what. No one's ever kicked out of that before. Is it it? Is Brent going to the finale? The main event. One. Two. I can't believe it. Captain Oates is kicked out of the headbutts to the you-know-what. No one's ever kicked out of that. Now, he tried to go after the Mass Canuck who gets him with the tailbone slam. And now the DDT, but Brent's still up. He gets the Mass Canuck now. Gets him with the sidewalk slam. Getting back to his feet as the ma as uh, as the Brent rolls out. One, two, still kicks out. Captain O somehow digging down deep. He's still got that power. He's now going after the Mass Canuck, but he gets him with the double chops. Snapmare takedown. And now he's just going again for that big right hook to Captain Oates and the shot to the back as Brent is getting back to his feet. And now it looks like he's just going to town with those fists. Captain Oates in trouble as Brent, though, comes right back in. Oh no, and now Mass Canuck rolling to the outside to catch a breather. Oh no! A headbutts to the you know what again to Captain Oates as the Mass Canuck showing power and hits him with the electric chair drop. Is he gonna go in for the capitalized pin? Oh no, this has gotta be it. One, two, I can't believe it, Captain Oates kicking out again. The chairman's gonna have the brass is steel under there because those don't seem to be affecting him and he is back in the match with a clothesline to the Mass Canuck who now rolls out. It looks like Captain Oates though right after him. He's picking the Mass Canuck up. Throws him right back into the ring as Brent also exited. All three men back in the ring now. It looks like, oh no, military press to body breaker by the Mass Canuck, saving that pin that Brent tried to steal. The Ma Captain Oates has to be down after that. Looks like shoulder breaker coming up by, uh, by Brent, excuse me, and he gets it. Brent now. With the giant headbutt. We haven't seen that in a long time. Giant baby headbutt. One, two, three. Brent is the winner and he is moving to the main event at one hell of a summer night where he will take on SSC Stewart for the OCW World Heavyweight Championship. What a heck of a match. I can't believe that Captain Oates somehow survived the two headbutts to the you-know-whats because no one's ever kicked out of that here on OCW. But ultimately, Brent was just able to show us his monster of a dominance. And I really think that Stuart at this point must already be making his Hail Marys and praying because he knows what's coming. And like I said... Brent is just a dominant force. I don't think anyone's going to be able to take the title away from him should he win it this Saturday here on OCW Oats Championship Wrestling.
Don't forget, guys, to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell to catch OCW every Tuesday. And, and around normally the Saturday of each month, we'll have a pay-per-view. Eventually, we'll do it live. Put it in the comments down below if you guys would love to see a live OCW here on YouTube. Brant, congratulations, you big baby head. You have made it all the way to the end. Now is also a Hell in the Cell match. It is a rematch between Mrs. Oates and Nikki for the OCW Women's Championship. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Mrs. Oates or is it going to be Nikki? These women will also face back up this Saturday with Natalia as the streak and rivalry finally comes to an end. Who will become the women's championship this Saturday and who will walk out the champion tonight? As you guys recall, Natalia, Nikki, and Mrs. Oates are actually a stable, but the three of them have been ex exchanging the women's championship as they, they just continuously continue to up updo each other. But they have decided to call it quits this Saturday. But tonight is a rematch between these two. Mrs. Oates already going for the bear hug. But Nikki is able to break free. Throws Mrs. Oates into the corner. Gets her with the back backbreaker there. Gets her up by the hair. Oh, with a face rake. Gets her with a backbreaker. Nikki back to her feet now. And is slamming Mrs. Oates to the mat. Nikki kicks her while she's down. Oh no. Nikki goes and she got her with Mrs. Oates though. Gets it where a toe hold. Nikki in the corner now. Mrs. Oates is just... Putting those right fists in. Putting Nikki up. She's got her up against the turnbuckle. What is she thinking here? Oh no, looks like a big backbreaker coming. And it is. Is it enough? Mrs. Oates getting back to her feet now. And now Mrs. Oates got Nikki. Oh, Nikki reverses. I can't believe it. Nikki reversed. Nikki's got Mrs. Oates against the ropes. And now she's going for it. Oh, no. And she gets her with the knee to the back. And now she is going for the pin. One. Only a one count. Gets her with the kicks to the back. Nikki now picks up Mrs. Oates. Gets her with the clothesline. She's lifting her up by the hair again. Again with the face rake. She's got Mrs. Oates once more. Head bounced off the turnbuckle. Nikki picks her up. Oh, what is she thinking here? Package modified suplex one, two, only a two count as Mrs. Oates is able to kick out and continue to retain her OCW championship. Big stomp though to the face by Nikki. Nikki picks her up. Oh, what is she thinking here? Canadian driver, is it enough? She decides not to go for the pin as she picks up Mrs. Oates. Modified, twisted, unprettier. Is it enough for the three count? One, two. Mrs. O kicks out right after two. Nikki now back to her feet. What is she thinking here? Oh, no. She's got her in her hold. She's got her. Is Mrs. O's going to tap out? Mrs. O's has tapped out. We have a new women's OCW champion as Nikki walks in to one hell of a summer night as our women's champion. I can't believe it.
Nikki did get pretty dominant there about mid-match, and she just never stopped putting all the fuel in. Can she bring that same energy this Saturday coming up when she defends that OCW Women's Championship against Mrs. Oates and Natalia? That twisted unprettier. We thought that was it there, but Mrs. Oates was able to stay resilient and did kick out. But ultimately, it was that hold that was able to make Mrs. Oates tap out, making Nikki our new women's champion. Well played on you. There it is. The moment where she tapped out. Tonight was full of action. I hope you guys are enjoying OCW. They've been great to do. Put in the comments down below. If you guys want to be part of the action, don't forget to reach out to me on social media or join my Discord. You can join our Discord, which will be in the description down below. Or reach out to me on social media. We are always looking for new wrestlers, so you feel free to join us. You can also catch me live by going to Captain Oats TV over on Twitch, and we also stream at Facebook at Captain Oats Mixer. We do need to change that name, but for the time being, that's the name it is, as it used to be a fan page over on Facebook, but we do we do live streams there. You can also catch me over at Captain Oats here on YouTube, over on our Twitter, and over on Instagram as Oats and the Gang, but I also have one for me, which is Captain Oats TV. I hope you guys, again, are enjoying Oats Championship Wrestling. Put some comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell all your wrestling friends about this show. And uh, as always, stay chill, Wrestleheads, and I will catch every single one of you guys on the next one. Stay chill.